Hey, comic kids. It's Cash Cow back with another video. Uh, hopefully, you guys, New Year's was New Year's celebration was safe. Everybody's still in the land of the living, seeing to be positive, striving towards goals for this new year. Starting off 2022, right? <laughs> That's still weird to say. But um, <clears throat> today I'm going to do seven lucky kingpin comics you guys might want to keep your eye out for. Because I don't have a feeling that he's done. Even though watching the Hawkeye season finale, I don't feel like kingpin is done. I feel like he's got room to grow and he's like they that um Echo didn't kill him off. Like in the comics she blinds him, right? So I feel like with Marvel they they have a good track record of following the comics. So I feel like why do anything different now with it? Right? You guys want to see those seven comics? Then let's get into it, guys. Number one. Got Kingpin number one. This actually came out in the early 2000s. I didn't know I, that he had had a number one issue. So probably maybe right before Hawkeye series started. And I did my research, and I was like, oh, he has a number one issue of his own. You know, like, usually villains, unless you're, like, a top-tier villain, you don't get your own series. Like, you have your Kangs and uh, Thanos and, you know, people like that. They're, they're top-tier villains. They're going to get their own issue series. People, You can make a series about Kingpin, and people would watch it because he's that iconic of a character. Then with having the same guy who did it, Vincent, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. Um, but the guy that played Kingpin in the Daredevil series, the same guy was a legendary actor in that series. So I feel like Kingpin has room to grow. Now, this is his first series solo series title number one kingpin number one right now these are still pretty affordable guys you can find these for like under 30 bucks i feel like why not take the chance on that i snatched me up one i'm happy with that if i can find another one or two with the price being right then i'm glad for it now with kingpin you probably might see a cooling off period for a fact for a period of time because there's not news until he'll be in the next series. But he's not dead. So it has room to grow. It's going to stabilize for a while. And then once he's confirmed, okay, he's going to appear in maybe the Echo series. Or with us finally getting introduced that Charlie Cox as Daredevil is going to be in the MCU you know that they can't do Daredevil without Kingpin, so they're setting it up for you're gonna you're gonna. I pretty much feel like you're gonna see Kingpin in the Echo series and in the Daredevil series. But Echo end up she ends up falling in love with Daredevil, so those two series might intertwine and connect with each other on different ways that nobody's really paying attention to, guys. Now, with that being said, also, um, Kingpin's not going anywhere. I don't see Kingpin going anywhere, guys. So, I, don't, I, I think it's a safe bet to invest in anything Kingpin. Hopefully, you guys can see that. You know, I like that. Like, hey, Kingpin is that guy. When I finally saw him... And I heard that ominous music playing. I was like, oh, man, business got to pick up. And I want to apologize because I told my subscribers a while ago, I was like, I don't feel like Kingpin's going to be introduced in the Hawkeye. And I said that, and I am on record saying that. If you saw my Hawkeye 
uh, Specs video, I said I didn't feel like he was going to be introduced. I didn't. I just didn't feel like it. I didn't feel it was time. But I am wrong. And I was wrong. And I apologize to you guys for that. I was wrong on that. Kingpin did it. He did get introduced. He did appear. The rest is history. That being said, that's my first comic of all. With seven, I'm going to show you that you guys might want to, you know, take a look at and take a chance on getting a copy or two and keeping it for yourself. You can find them at high grades, and if you plan on fil flipping them, then hey, do your thing. That being said, guys, number two, we got the Amazing Spider-Man number eighty-three. This is the first appearance of Schemer, who is later to be revealed as the Rose. And also, the Rose is revealed to be Schemer and the Rose. He has a few identities. Later to be revealed as Richard Fisk. Also, this is the first full appearance of Vanessa Fisk, Kingpin's wife. Wilson Fisk. That that's Kingpin. So you got Richard Fisk, who is the schemer. You have Vanessa Fisk, which is his wife. And then now we just seeing that you have a daughter of his that I actually feel like is gonna be a an antagonist later on down the road in the uh, Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur series. I feel like she's gonna be one of the main antagonists in that, even though it's gonna be an animated series. I feel like she's gonna have some staying power as well. You guys might want to invest in that. That's a uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number thirty-two. They have a first print and they have a second print. Can't go wrong with either one of those. You guys might want to invest in the first print as it's starting to get it's starting to creep past that thirty dollars, starting to get into that forty dollar mark now. So you guys might want to take a look on that. I think actually. The Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur series is slated for this year. If I'm not mistaken, I really think it's slated for this year. Now, with that being said, you know if they actually one day may do a Kingpin series, they're gonna they're gonna show because at Richard Fist, his son, the schemer or the Rose, actually turns on his dad and becomes an enemy of his dad, and Kingpin has to kill him one day. Talk about a messed up family, man. Like, you <laughs> they gonna try to take my empire when I, you wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for me having my empire. That's crazy, but that's the world of comics, guys. With that being said, this is the second one. You guys might want to take a look at that. That's that's not a bad issue to have. Right now, you're starting to see some gains in that. I feel like once the first appearance cools off, the other ones are ones that are going to start to gain some steam because people are going to realize, like, okay, what other important stories of Kingpin ties him in? Like, like what else is there besides Amazing Spider-Man number 50? You know, you got a few other comics that aren't as valuable as that one right now, but they're valuable. That being said, guys. We got the first, we got uh, the Amazing Spider-Man number 70. This is the first cameo appearance of Vanessa Fisk, Kingpin's wife. Now it's such because in the comics, Vanessa Fisk is actually killed. So she dies and he goes from there and he tries to he moves to, I want to say, Japan and tries to escape from that and, you know, settle down with another family. But his past always comes back to haunt him. Like, he's, he doesn't get away from being that. And in the end, he becomes a vengeful person because he tries to escape his past, but he can't. So what else are you going to become when you can't escape your past, you know? So I think it shows pretty... It's interesting with the fact that Kingpin that... At the beginning, he kind of... He aspires to 
be a better criminal than his dad because his dad actually sets him up to where he gets locked up and then he learns the tricks of the trade and how to become a better criminal while he's in prison but he first he started off doing it just to be a better criminal than his dad but at the end of the day he like at the, at the beginning he doesn't want to become the kingpin not not that's not like his first intent like i'm going to be the biggest baddest criminal in new york and and run stuff on a, a global enterprise but in the end he becomes that you know that's another issue and that's a dark horse you guys might want to check that out i love that yellow background with the spotlight with the police spider-man you know of course they're not going to show vanessa fist she's not like a top tier villain she just happens to be the wife of the kingpin and but that's important because he actually loves his wife he will go to war over vanessa it's no joke like if you come in at vanessa you're gonna get kingpin and everything at his disposal coming at you but that being said guys we moving into the next one this is the fourth comic i want to show you guys this is the Amazing Spider-Man number 60. People know this a lot as Old Bitter Victory. I love that solid black background, y'all. That is nice. This is the fifth appearance of Kingpin. Now, Kingpin has a fourth appearance where is Amazing Spider-Man, I want to say, ooh. 59 or something where he is he has an alter ego called the brainwasher so that's actually I think technically that may be his fourth appearance maybe but this is his fifth appearance as the kingpin so this is why I showed this one because not a lot of people know his alter ego is the brainwasher. They know him as Wis Wilson Fisk, the kingpin. Now, like, like, look at him. Like, he, he's whipping Spider-Man around. They're going to slam him up against something. Man, that cover is classic to me. Comics like these are going to see a spike in value because nobody's really, like, everybody's so focused on the first or the second appearance that... They're letting a lot of the other comics that mean something as far as the fifth appearance, the first appearance of his daughter, the first appearance of his son, his wife. They're letting a lot of those comics slip through. Now, don't get me wrong. They have seen some spikes and gains in value because people that the, the investors that actually want to cover the board on Kingpin know that, hey, okay, I need to invest in everything dealing with Kingpin. Not just his first and second and third or first origin, none of that. They're, they're investing in all of that. And once Kingpin is, once he premiered, everything took a bump. Now, his first appearance and second appearance took major spikes. But those other appearances and the ones I've shown you already and the ones I'm going to show you, they took a spike as well. Not a big one, but a little jump. Like they're jumping rope, they're they're gonna get there. Once it's confirmed that he'll be in another project, they're gonna take off even more. Even the first and second appearance are gonna take off even more. Now they're gonna go through a cooling period right now because this year slated is uh, She Hulk, which I'm pretty sure Kingpin's not gonna be in, um, and Armor Wars which he, he doesn't fit in that storyline, so why would he be in that? I feel like by the middle of this year or the end of this year, we'll finally have confirmation that, okay, Wilson Fisk will be in the Echo series. Okay, we're going to develop a Daredevil movie or Daredevil se uh, series, and Kingpin's going to be in that. And then they'll pick, off, pick up off of where Hawkeye left off. Like they're getting you ready for it. But that's old bitter victory. Like Kingpin's one of the few villains that's actually 
defeated the Spider-Man and Hawkeye. I mean, not Hawkeye, um, Daredevil, I'm sorry. That's two top-tier superheroes this guy has beaten by himself. So if that doesn't tell you the level or the quality of villain he is, nothing else will. Like, Kingpin is no joke. He is the real deal, guys. That being said, we got the Amazing Spider-Man number 52. This is the third appearance of the Kingpin. This is another one people are starting to go after because the first and the second appearance, I'm moving stuff all around. The first and the second appearance have started to get out of a lot of collectors or investors price range. And it happens quickly, it's overnight. Like you'll have one comic that was 60 bucks and then overnight it'll be a $200 comic. It happens that quick or within a few hours. So, a lot of people are like, okay, well, let me go after the third appearance. Now, you still can afford this. Like, it's a lot of copies are still being sold, maybe. Some of them, depending on the grade, for under $100. Now, if we, anybody knows with any comic, if it's a higher grade, you're going to pay the premium. It's a higher grade comic. That's just the way it goes, guys. With that being said, you guys might want to take a look at that. That's the third appearance of them. And everybody's really not focused on it because he's not on the cover. Like his fifth appearance, he's on the cover. Which, I mean, that will actually become a little higher of a focus point on most collectors because he's on the cover. Like, when a part, when the character that's appearing is on the cover, I feel like comics actually go for a higher price because if they're to be graded, people are like, okay, I have the some, some appearance of blah, 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 and they're on the cover. Like, that, to the average mind of the collector or investor, that looks better. They're on the cover of the comic. It's not like this is third appearance, but just looking at the cover, you wouldn't know. You see Spider-Man and Jonah J. Jameson. You don't know if this is his third appearance. Unless either A, you were an active reader of the comic books, or two, you did your research and you already know. One or the other, guys. That being said, number six. We got the Amazing Spider-Man number 51. This is the second appearance and actually the first cover appearance. Second appearance and first cover appearance of the Kingpin. Right there, that white suit. And the first appearance of Robbie Robertson, which is actually a mentor to Peter Parker. And one of the people he works with at the, um, oh, Lord, is that the Daily Daily Bugle? I don't know why, like, DC and Marvel kind of copy each other because you have the Daily Planet, then you have the Daily Bugle. Like, come on now, y'all doing too much. Like, Superman's in a whole different city from Spider-Man. Spider-Man's in New York. Superman's in Metropolis. Like, yeah, I can find different names for the, the publishing companies, but whatever. We're not going to go into that. But with that being said, this is actually saying a spike as well because, like I said, he's on the cover for the first time. Even though his first appearance is iconic, the cover is iconic. Everybody pretty much knows, okay, Kingpin's, that's his first appearance. But his first cover appearance is the one after. And that's a lovely comic. Like, he's gotten, like, a guy getting ready to shoot him. Two two guys getting ready to shoot him. Others getting ready to beat him down. King, Kingpin ain't no joke, y'all. Like, he ain't no joke. So, this one's actually seen a spike. And it's going to continue to see a spike as long as the Kingpin is in the MCU, guys. That being said. And that's actually probably my favorite comic out of this whole collection. Even, I mean, the first appearance is lovely. That's a vault comic. 
but this is probably my first. This is like my favorite one. He appears on that. With that being said, number seven. Last one, guys. Lucky seven. We got the Amazing Spider-Man number 50. And if you watch my um, Under the Tree comics video, then this is a comic that I actually got last year. Towards the end, right before Hawkeye debuted and it got hot. Um, this has the iconic part in the story where Peter Parker throws away his Spider-Man suit in the trash can. He's walking away. That's iconic in this. But this is Kingpin's first appearance. You got that solid red background. You have, and they kind of foreshadow it. Because if you pay attention, they got Peter Parker walking away. And then Spider-Man's back is turned too as well. So they kind of, well, you know, Spider-Man no more. Right there at the bottom. So they kind of foreshadow what's going to happen. Kingpin is no joke, guys. And with that being said, this is my lucky seven comics you guys might want to invest in or take a look at if you're willing to spec or invest in Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. the Kingpin. If you guys like the content, like, subscribe, comment if you want. Let's keep this thing rolling this new year. Um, I'm just having fun with this, guys. I got a few other videos coming. I got, uh, got some stuff I'm going to talk about Man Wolf with you guys. I got, uh, what else? Um, I'm going to do a five, top five Marvel comics you guys might want to keep your eye out on for this year. I'm going to do a top five DC comics. You guys might want to keep your eye out for. Um, I got a few videos down the, the, you know, the pipeline, the chain, guys. But for the most part, I have a fun with this. I actually got a few comics I got to open the day that came. You know, so, hey, I, this we're bringing in the new year. We're going to get ready for She-Hulk, Armor Wars, Moon Girl, Di Devil Dinosaur. We're just going to have fun with it. You guys subscribe, man. Subscribe. You know, you're going to see some good content. Uh, this year, I'm gonna, I am gonna. should be having a few PGX unboxings. I'm not, this isn't my first year fully into YouTube, but hey, I'm enjoying it. I'm starting to see some traction and some comments and some likes and, you know, subscribe subscribers that actually rock with me. And I enjoy that, man. You guys be safe. Stay focused, be humble, it's cash cow.